Sydney George Barnes, born on 5th of June 1916 and died 16th of December 1973, was an Australian cricketer and cricket writer who played 13 test matches between 1938 and 1948. Able to open the innings or bat down the order, Barnes was regarded as Australia's finest batsman in the period immediately following the Second World War. Sid Barnes was a key member of Donald Bradman's famous Australian cricket team, which toured England in 1948. The team went undefeated in their 34 matches. This unprecedented feat by a test side touring England earned them the reputation the Invincibles. A right-handed opening batsman, Barnes was part of Bradman's first choice team and played in four of the five tests. He missed one match due to injury, partnering the left-handed Arthur Morris. So Sid Barnes' nickname was Bagger. His batting style was right-handed and his bowling style was right arm leg break. Now his test debut was the 10th of June 1948 versus England and his last test the 14th of August 1948 versus England. Barnes ended the first class matches with 1,354 runs at a batting average of 56.41, including three centuries, placing him fifth in the aggregates and sixth in the averages among the Australians. Barnes found his best form in the tests, yielding 329 runs at 82.25, ranking him third in the aggregates and second in the averages. He scored half centuries in both innings of the first test at Trent Bridge before compiling a hard-hitting 141 in the second innings of the second test at Lords, helping him to set up victory in both matches. In the third test, Barnes was injured and hospitalised after being hit in the ribs by a Dick Pollard pull shot. He returned the next day and attempted to bat but collapsed again and had to be taken back to hospital for an extended stay, missing two weeks of cricket. After missing the fourth test, Barnes returned to score his third half century for the series as an Australian completed a 4-0 win with an innings victory in the fifth test. Aside from his run scoring, Barnes, who was well known for being eccentric, gained fame throughout the season for his fielding at short leg, just a few metres from the batsman where he took 19 catches for the season. Barnes stood much closer than others who fielded in the position, placing one foot on the edge of the pitch. His extreme proximity prompted questions about the legitimacy of his action. An English captain, Norman Yardley, later admitted Barnes had intimidated his batsmen. So Barnes was regarded as one of Australia's finest batsmen and he helped create an enduring record when scoring 234 in the second test against England at Sydney in December 1946, exactly the same score as his captain, Sir Don Bradman. In the process, setting a world record 405 run fifth wicket partnership, Barnes averaged 63.5 over 19 innings in a career that, like most of his contemporaries, was interrupted by the Second World War. Mm. So he made his first class debut at the end of 1936-37 season when selected for New South Wales and he was later included in the team for the 1938 Australian Tour of England, making his test debut in the final international of the series. On resumption of test cricket after the war, he was picked as opening part partner to Arthur Morris. Barnes was a member of the Invincibles, the 1948 Australian team that toured England without losing a single match. Retiring from cricket at the end of that tour, Barnes attempted a comeback to test cricket in 1951-52 season that was ultimately and controversially unsuccessful. So Barnes had come to the attention of the New South Wales selectors by the 1936-37 season and was included as the 12th man in the side to play the visiting English side, 
taking a catch on the boundary to dismiss Stan Worthington. He made his first class debut in the final Sheffield Shield match of the season against South Australia at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Batting at number 5, Barnes scored 31 and 44, twice being dismissed by the leg spinner Frank Ward. Whilst fielding, Barnes managed to find himself in controversy again, running out Vic Richardson, the opposition captain, after the end of over was called. A square leg umpire had not heard the call of over and upheld the appeal, much to the disgust of Richardson. The New South Wales captain, Stan McCabe, who Barnes idolised, withdrew the appeal. Barnes was selected for New South Wales for the opening match of the 1937-38 season against Queensland, making 68 in a rain-affected match against the touring New Zealanders. Barnes fell just short of his maiden first-class century, scoring 97. He appeared to have reached the landmark when scoring 127, not out against Western Australia, but the New South Wales Cricket Association. Retrospectively, deemed the match to be not at first-class status, angering Barnes. He finally scored his maiden first-class century against Victoria in the final game of the season, completing his 100 while bleeding profusely after being struck on the jaw by a ball delivered by Ernie McCormick. As a result of his performances over the season, scoring over 800 runs, averaging 50 to 56, Barnes was selected as the youngest member of the Australian cricket team to tour England in 1938. So he was a part-time leg break bowler, taking 57 wickets in first-class cricket at a useful average of 32-21. Barnes' leg break spun very little, but he had a top spinner which hurried onto the batsman and yielded him very many wickets. Barnes was also a substitute wicketkeeper and a versatile fieldsman. During his career, he was noted for his disaffection for cricket administrators and umpires. On the 1948 Tour of England, after an Australian appeal was turned down by umpire Alex Skilding, he grabbed a stray dog and presented it to Skilding, stating, Now all you want is a white stick. A complex character, Barnes rarely forgave a sight or forgot a good turn. Stocky with blue eyes and powerful wrists, he had a passion for physical fitness and was an enthusiastic big game fisherman and golfer. So Sid Barnes, Bagger Barnes, was well known for his betting style and he played alongside Sir Donald Bradman and in the height of his career was noted as one of the world's best batsmen in their time. We're going to show you a short clip showing some of his achievements. Play resumed on a damaged wickets, but Sid Barnes was still there. And despite the efforts of the English bowlers, he and Don Bradman set about rewriting the record book. Barnes notched his first test century and crawled past the 200 mark after nine and a half hours before his marathon dig ended at 234, the slowest double century in test history, breaking Sid Gregory's highest score by an Australian in a Sydney test, 201 established in 1894. England spinner Douglas Wright strove in vain to break the Barnes Bradman fifth wicket partnership of 405, which set a new high for any wicket in tests in Australia. So Barnes had a reputation as an eccentric and was a lovable rogue, and was frequently the subject of controversy. This included a celebrated libel case following his exclusion from the national team in 1951-52 to for reasons other than cricket ability. He was later involved in an incident where, acting as 12th man, he performed his duties on the ground in a suit and tie, rather than whites, carrying a bizarre range of superfluous items. Despite this reputation, Barnes was a shrewd businessman who used the opportunities afforded by cricket to supplement his income through trading, journalism and property development. Increasing paranoia brought about by bipolar disorder. 
saw Barnes lose many of the friends he had made through the game as he sought treatment for his depression. On the 16th of December 1973, he was found dead at his home in Sydney suburb of Collaroy. He had ingested barbiturates and bromide in a probable suicide. So Sydney Bagger Barnes is resting in the northern suburbs Memorial Gardens in Ryde, New South Wales, in a niche on the wall. And he's second row from the bottom. And as you can see by his plaque, there's nothing to commemorate what he has achieved in his cricketed times. And I'd say that's due to his mental health and he was more or less ostracised by the Australian Cricketing Association which I feel is really sad because he had achieved so much in life and other than a few small articles about him, there's nothing. And I feel, you know, big cricketers like Sir Donald Bradman and some of the other cricketers have achieved and have so much recognition. But this man, who was a batsman and achieved scores and could perform as good as any of the famous cricket greats out there in Australia, has nothing, has nothing to mark what he has achieved in life. And I found his grave very sad. Um, I would like Sydney Barnes to have the recognition of what he achieved in life. There wasn't even an area for me to put down a flower. And all I want to say to Sydney Barnes is I hold my hat up to you um, and I'm a proud of what you achieved in life. So I hope other cricket fans agree that this man was a brilliant batsman in his time, achieved many great things and regardless of him suffering mental health, deserves more recognition for his achievements in life batting alongside some of the cricket greats. I would like him recognised for what he had achieved in cricket and not for suffering mental health and causing controversy on the field. So Sydney Barnes, I'm really proud of what you've achieved for Australia and Australian cricket and I hope you're resting in peace.